to you in the precious name of Jesus. This is destiny time and today is your day to encounter your supernatural destiny. Testimonies are powerful. They are life changing. They are inspiring and they influence lives. And I'm sure you've heard of testimonies in your own life where you've heard people, you know, you've heard God encounter people in a powerful way. So today on the program, I have a dear friend of mine. Uh, he's a young man and he's encountered the Lord in a powerful way. So we're going to hear from him how the Lord touched his life. So Sadish, welcome to the program. Uh, for the benefit of our viewers, if you can share a little bit about yourself, that would be great. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for having me on your show. It's a privilege being here. Uh, about me, uh, I work as a technical trainer and uh, I'm in the mechanical engineering field. I'm based in Bangalore and I'm also involved in the ministry uh, mm -hmm. during weekends. I'm also involved in the prayer sessions. That's wonderful. So, so how do you manage between the two? You have a career, you have a ministry on the side. So, uh, how do you balance between the two? Uh, the major chunk of the ministerial activities happen during the weekends mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I work from Monday to Friday. So, mm -hmm. uh, by the grace of God, I'm able to manage mm -hmm. as of now. So, uh, Satish, the Lord has blessed you with a wonderful career. Uh, you have a ministry. But many years ago, uh, things were in uh, like this for you, right? So, tell us something about your background. Um, I was born to Hindu parents. Mm -hmm. My father was a mechanical engineer. and uh, He held a managerial position in a private sector. And my mother uh, worked as a pharmacist. Mm. And uh, that's where it all started. And uh, I was their first son. Mm. And... Uh, fourth and fifth standard some things happened in my family which mm -hmm. uh, affected my childhood oh, and, okay. uh, mm -hmm. uh, which which uh, affected all of all our lives uh, mm. my mother's life and uh, mm -hmm. all of our lives okay and it had an impact on us mm. so uh, so i understand that you know you, you started off well and then you know you came to a stage when you were in your fourth or fifth standard mm -hmm. uh, suddenly something changed so yes. so if you could share a little bit more on that uh, what yeah. really happened uh, during my fourth, uh, what happened was uh, uh, my father got into some kind of uh, wrong habits mm -hmm. and which later on went on to become addictions in his life mm -hmm. and this uh, affected the entire family mm -hmm. and uh, my mother had to cope up with this new mm -hmm. thing which she was mm -hmm. facing and mm -hmm. she also had to take care of me. So what kind of an addiction is that? Uh, he got into alcohol oh, and uh, okay. um, Initially, it started off. Uh, it was uh, it was not so frequent, but uh, as days progressed, uh, uh, it affected him, and he got uh, very much involved in it. And uh, uh, over a period of time, uh, we as a family uh, were suf suffered because of that, and uh, um, our uh, growing up was affected. And my mother had to manage everything, and uh, she had to take care of us. So there was a huge burden on her. And my childhood was marked by uh, all such things, all of yeah. these. Uh, I can totally understand because uh, alcohol today is uh, destroying so many families, is destroying so many homes, and uh, children are you know abandoned by their own parents. And uh, so uh, I know it would have been really difficult. So so at that point, uh, how was your uh, you know? Uh, mother managing the whole thing because you all were still very young uh, as children and so how was she responding to this? Uh, she was a strong person mm. but uh, there was a quest for her for the truth. Mm. Uh, she was seeking answers. She used mm. to uh, go to spiritual meetings, mm. uh, every spiritual place mm. uh, where they offered solutions mm. and she was seeking for answers. She was mm. at the same time, mm. at the same time she had a quest for the truth in her mm -hmm. and uh, uh, there was a constant pursuit in her life mm -hmm. for answers which we were going through mm -hmm. and she also protected us from mm -hmm. all this mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. there was a point in her life where uh, she encountered the Lord. Oh, uh, that's wonderful. And, uh, mm -hmm. She encountered the Lord uh, mm -hmm. somewhere in the year 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, people shared the gospel to her. A few, people, mm -hmm. few of her neighbors shared the gospel to her and uh, mm -hmm. uh, she encountered the Lord and uh, was saved. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I understand that uh, you, uh, you know, your father was addicted to this uh, whole, you know, uh, alcohol thing, and it really kind of, you know, uh, worsened your family situation. Something turned around for you uh, in 2008. Is that right? Uh, so can you just talk a little bit about that? 
prior to that uh, i would also like to brief on my lifestyle what happened to me until uh, the age of uh, until 12th standard I was, things were okay i was pretty clean uh, when i joined engineering even the first year uh, was okay but uh, second year onwards i had some failures in my uh, uh, academics and uh, i also was influenced by a group of people uh, wrong uh, wrong friends and uh, um, and i got into uh, alcohol i myself got into alcohol addiction and uh, um, into all sorts of uh, nightlife activities and uh, where uh, it had a toll on me too mm. and my mother had to cope up with all this mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. uh, she somehow brought us up uh, mm. in this atmosphere mm. and what happened was uh, in the, after my mother got saved mm-hmm. uh, after she uh, encountered the lord mm. um, in the year 2009 uh mm. there was a turning point in my life too wow um mm-hmm. and uh, she uh, she used to pray for me a lot she used to mm-hmm. share the gospel mm-hmm. with me by then uh, we had shifted mm-hmm. uh, to a new location mm-hmm. and my so at this time was your father still with you all or what happened to your father uh um, my father had passed away we lost oh, him in the year so 2008 okay. and then mm. we shifted to a newer uh, location where mm. uh, uh, my mother uh, was mm-hmm. uh, was growing up in the lord uh, mm. her our neighbor shared the gospel to her oh, yeah. and she was growing up in the lord at the same time i was dealing with my own addictions at that point mm-hmm. of time i had finished my engineering and i was working then mm. uh, at the same time i was I had to deal with all these things mm-hmm. in my life and my mother used to preach the gospel uh, mm. to me and uh, mm. many men of god have prayed for me mm. um in the year 2009 uh, mm. in the month of may uh, something uh, uh, something uh, drastic happened and uh, we, oh yeah. okay so so you were in college uh, your your father passed away and then um, your mother is now uh, encountered the lord and uh, so i understand that you come from a very traditional background so uh, how did you as a young man respond to your mother's uh, you know encounter uh i never objected her belief oh. i never controlled her but um mm. uh, i uh, allowed her to follow what she believed in That's wonderful. but um mm. uh personally i never wanted to get involved in it mm. uh, i didn't make much sense to me there was mm. no logic in it mm-hmm. I, w- i was more logically minded and i found the gospel had no logic in it mm. and uh, uh but my mother used to pray mm. on a consistent level she mm. used to pray mm. and she used mm. to bring a lot of men of god to mm. her uh, place and mm. they used to lay hands over me and pray for me oh okay and okay. Uh, so so how were you managing your uh, career and you know you were involved in so many addictions yourself and uh, was it affecting your studies and academics i uh, it did affect my studies but uh, somehow i was able to finish my engineering mm. and later on get a job um uh, and but it uh, it had an effect it had mm. an effect mm. but there was a saturation point there mm. was a saturation point where i had to either uh, be uh, in a place where i had to only work or mm. uh, mm-hmm. you know destroy myself for doing all this mm. so uh, at that point my mother got saved and mm. there were pe- people preached the gospel to me they prayed for me mm. and i was going through a phase okay at okay. that point of time okay that's wonderful so 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 you come to a stage in your college life um you know as i uh, understand and something happened to you in your college life uh so can you tell us a little bit about that uh in the may uh in the month of may 2009 um mm-hmm. uh, i encountered the lord um mm-hmm. uh, in a very powerful way uh what happened was as usual uh one saturday uh, uh i and my friends went out uh to drink mm. and what happened then we i met with an accident after coming back oh. uh, from the mm-hmm. bar uh and uh, the next day i had to take medication for all the wounds which i had mm-hmm. and i had taken these medications and then again went out with my friends uh to have a drink mm-hmm. and what happened at this point of time was uh there was a, a reaction which happened in me uh, which led to uh, a total blackout Oh. Uh, I became unconscious you know, in that place where, mm-hmm. uh, where I and my friends had gathered, and uh, my friends rushed me to the nearest hospital over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, on as soon as they took me to the hospital, I gained uh, a little conscious over there. I, I was a little bit conscious about the things happening around me, and uh, I could hear people around me 
I was I was take, uh, taken on you know on the stretcher to the emergency ward, and I could hear people around me um, arguing and uh, you know uh, my friends asking the doctor to treat me and mm -hmm. a lot of things was happening around me, and uh, there was also a nurse beside me who was speaking to my friend. She was uh, telling my friend that uh, my BP was going down and uh, mm. they couldn't allow it to happen, and. So I, I was hearing all this. I, I could overhear all this chaos which were was happening because the doctors were hesitating to treat me. Mm -hmm. They 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 weren't uh, willing to treat me immediately because none of my family members were present. Mm -hmm. So uh, they I I needed immediate attention. Mm -hmm. So there was a chaos happening around me. There was a lot of ar arguments and uh, mm -hmm. uh, happening around me at that point of time. And as I was laying down. Um, I was in a, a remorseful state of mind, I and I, w I mm. never wanted to be in the place mm. where I was, mm. and I never imagined that I would be there. Mm. And as I was recollecting about uh, my childhood and uh, all these things which I went through, mm. and I ended up here, uh, suddenly, uh, out of me, out of within me, there was a a voice, a, s a clear, still voice. Mm -hmm. I could hear it amidst all the noise around me. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, pray to Jesus. Oh. Mm. And when I heard this, mm. I uh, recollected all the gospel which was shared to me. I recollected mm. all the preachings which I heard, mm. and I, I decided to uh, make a prayer to the Lord. Mm. And at that point of time. Uh, I prayed uh, that I prayed to the Lord Jesus, asking Him that Lord, if You touch me this day, mm. if You bring me out of this this deathbed situation, wow. mm. uh, I would uh, not bow to any other God mm. from this day, mm. and You will be my God. Mm. And uh, uh, I prayed that prayer, mm. and half an hour from having prayed that prayer, I uh, was uh, released from the emergency ward. I was wow. taken to the ICU mm. for monitoring. Mm. But I mean, they were they were monitoring me for two mm. days, mm. and uh, later I was out of the ICU. Wow! So so uh, it was almost at a situation where you, where you were on your deathbed, and you asked the Lord Jesus to touch you, and the Lord changed you, yeah. like in a moment. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, that's wow. true. Wow! This is the so scriptures. Mm -hmm. uh, the scriptures, Joel two. In mm -hmm. the in the chapter Joel mm -hmm. Joel two, mm -hmm. talk about whosoever called upon mm -hmm. uh, call upon the name of the Lord mm -hmm. shall be saved. Uh, that mm -hmm. verse became real in my life. Mm -hmm. I I experienced that word mm -hmm. uh, in reality in my life. Wow, God is so faithful, isn't He, Satish? Yeah. 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 So so you come out of the hospital and and what happened after that? So were you a changed man? Uh, did all your addictions leave you? When I came out of the hospital, mm. I was changed mm. internally, but mm. I couldn't overcome these addictions. Okay, I mm -hmm. was in a position where I was still addicted, mm. but my heart was changed. Heart I was changed, yeah. I had given my life to, to Jesus, Jesus. Mm. and uh, I knew this fact that Jesus was a mm. uh, God who would answer prayers mm. and who would care for us. Mm. And at this point of time, uh, I started attending a lot of meetings, mm. Bible teachings, mm. and. Uh, Started growing with the Lord, but at the same time, I was addicted. Yeah, uh, yeah. there was another turning point which happened. Mm. Th yeah, that's so. Uh, I mean, uh, for many people, uh, when they encounter the Lord, uh, they encounter Him radically, and things can change overnight. For some people, it's a process, right? Mm. So, in your case, probably it was a process, and yes. God was teaching you. God was enabling you to overcome these addictions, and. Uh, so the Lord works, uh, you know, in beautiful ways uh, yeah. to to help us, right? So, so as you were going through that process, what were some of the things that that you were learning um, that you can share? Uh, there was a constant cry in my mm. heart to come out of this, mm. and uh, I never uh, um, missed on any Bible uh, mm. teaching sessions mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. any church activity. So there was a desperation in your yeah, heart. Yeah, there was for a desperation in my heart to mm. come out of all this, but mm. I couldn't. Mm. Uh, I needed a miracle, mm. and uh, and uh, what happened was uh, there was a phase in my life mm. uh, where I had to somehow come out of it. Mm. I reached a saturation point, mm. and um, during that period of my life, over mm. three to four months, uh, people had prayed over me. They mm. also even warned me and mm. cautiously mm. Uh, warned me to mm. to keep uh, be away from all this, and uh, I started. Crying to the Lord even more, mm. uh, my prayers were mm. even more, uh, uh, even more uh, deeper, and yeah, yeah, they were yeah. for a longer period of time. And 
then one one uh, one saturday uh, i and my friend who usually go to drink uh, we headed to the bar and i discussed with my friend he was a very close friend of mine he still is a close friend in the lord mm. uh, i discussed with him about all the things which i mm. went through and mm. all the things which were uh, spoken over me and mm-hmm. uh, he then uh, he then told me that uh, if you want to drink today i would <laughs> uh, he put the ball in my court mm-hmm. and uh, so i had to take a, a decision at that point of time mm-hmm. and during this one year of uh, experiencing the lord i mm-hmm. ke- i got uh, inclined to a particular christian song mm-hmm. a tamil song called yesu uh, christum in anba mm-hmm. and i wanted to buy this cd mm-hmm. i s- if i had found time i wanted to buy this cd mm-hmm. and uh, at that juncture um, mm-hmm. uh, there was the there was a christian music shop on my left hand side and there was a bar on my right hand side <laughs> so i was on the cross roads really you literally. had to make a choice yeah. yeah and what i decided then was um, i would go and uh, go to the music store and take the cd and, CD. and uh, not go to the bar that day mm-hmm. uh, not go to the bar that day and uh, what happened i went to the music store mm. and bought the cd and since then i haven't turned back uh, i took wow. uh, another week or mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. for the lord to deliver me but uh, mm-hmm. since then uh, the lord has preserved me i should say wow so it's all about his grace right Amen. Uh, Amen. the lord gives us grace to come out of every addiction and uh, uh, it's so wonderful to hear your story about you know how the lord uh, changed you uh, over a period of time uh, i'm sure there are a lot of young people watching right now and uh, they are wondering you know how can i overcome addictions how can i encounter the lord and uh, the answer is that his grace is more than sufficient for us and uh, he loves us even in the most deepest of our you know uh, sinful times and and he wants to touch us he wants to uh, you know bring us out of all of these things and he's continuously working with us friends so that's something that we learn so so satish i also understand that you are are now a man on fire for god you uh, Uh, are an intercessor you're a prayer warrior uh, you move in the prophetic so so tell us what happened you know as you grew in the lord uh, is there one experience that you can share you know that uh, kind of um, help people uh, watching this show you know understand what the lord did for you uh, after uh, i was delivered from all mm-hmm. these uh, addictions mm-hmm. um, i started uh, uh, pursuing the lord even more mm-hmm. diligently mm-hmm. and there was a point where uh, i realized that i needed the holy spirit yes mm. and a preacher uh, whom who was close to me at that mm. point of time told me that every christian has to be filled with the holy spirit Wonderful. so there was a increasing desire for the holy spirit mm. uh, for the holy spirit in filling in my heart and um, i got water baptized in in the month of december in 2010 mm. and 6 months prior to the, uh, 6 months later mm. uh, in the same month where i encountered the lord the first time mm. i was uh, filled with the holy ghost wow. and mm. i had a very powerful encounter with the mm. holy ghost mm. uh, what happened was uh, uh, they were laying in a, i went to a youth conference mm. and uh, the the ministers were laying hand on all the people who had mm. come there mm. and uh, um, they were praying for them mm. and when they laid their hand on me mm. uh, there was such a immense power of god which hit me mm. uh, i felt like i was connected to some electric source uh, <laughs> mm. and but i was not dying mm. you know mm-hmm. uh, that was the feeling which i had and mm. immense peace which filled me mm. and that was my first encounter with the holy spirit wow. and since then the lord has led me Uh, in doing his work at mm-hmm. the same time uh, living a life which is pleasing this is so wonderful um, you see uh, when you f- are filled with the holy spirit that is probably the beginning of your freedom right mm-hmm. because the bible says that uh, where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty mm-hmm. right so uh, friends if you're watching this program today i want to encourage you uh, you've heard a powerful testimony of how the lord uh, encountered satish uh and uh, changed his life and brought him to a place of victory uh god took a young man who was a drunkard and now made him a warrior uh so i encourage you today if you are watching this program and if you are thinking that 
I am not able to overcome these addictions. I want to encounter the Lord. I want to uh, ask you to agree with us right now as we pray. Uh, we're going to pray and ask the Lord to touch your life. We're going to ask the Lord to fill your heart with His presence. Even as the Lord touched uh, Satish uh, and filled him with the power of the Holy Spirit, and that power broke the addictions. If you're thinking that I can overcome addictions myself, I can overcome addictions to positive thinking or whatever, you know, it's not going to work. All it's going to take is the power of the Holy Spirit because God's power is the greatest power in this universe, my friend. So I want you to agree with me right now and, and begin to pray and ask the Lord to touch your life. If you've never given your life to Jesus, I want you to uh, consider giving your life to Jesus. If you're sitting in that sofa right now or if you're watching this program through your computer, uh, I want you to uh, consider giving your life to Jesus because Jesus Christ is our Savior. Jesus Christ is our healer. He is our deliverer and there is no person on the face of the earth that can change your situation because he is a mighty God. He died on the cross for you. He rose from the grave. He shed his blood and he is today seated on the throne and he rules the heavens and he rules the earth and one of these days he's coming back as a mighty king my friend. So we serve a God who is real, who understands the realities of life. Though he's a supernatural God, he is still a God who can come down to the pit and pick you up from from the mighty clay and put you on the rock to stay. That's the kind of God that we serve, my friend. So if you are watching right now, I want you to open your hearts to the Lord and say, God, I want you to touch me. I want you to fill my heart. I want you to come into my heart. You know, if you are uh, saying that, no, there is a vacuum in my heart and, and, and there is such an emptiness and I don't know how to overcome this emptiness, just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Because as you say that, the presence of Jesus is going to go into your life. The presence of Jesus is going to manifest in your life and your heart will be transformed, your heart will be changed and you will begin to receive a fresh new you know, lease of life. Uh, as you pray, the Lord will break you from every addiction. He will set you free because His power is there to deliver us. Hallelujah. Father, I just pray right now for your children as they're watching this program. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak the power of the Holy Spirit to enter into their rooms, Lord. I pray that the fire of God will touch that young man watching this telecast right now, Father God, that you will break those addictions. You will break every alcoholic addiction. You will break every drug addiction. You will break every power of darkness that has brought them into bondage, Lord. Right now, we speak in the mighty name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit to deliver, set free and cause them to walk in victory, Lord, because your word says that we are overcomers. Your word says we are more than conquerors and there is nothing that is too difficult for you, Master. Let your mighty hand be stretched forth right now and bring healing and restoration in the lives of your people, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're going to do right now and what you are doing right now in the midst of your people, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. If you have asked the Lord to come into your heart, I want you to rejoice today because today is the day of salvation in your life. And, and there is no greater decision that you can make than receive Jesus into your life, my friend. So uh, if you receive Jesus, I, I want you to uh, send an email to us at the mail mentioned below. It's mail at globalawakening.co.in. Uh, get in touch with us. We'd like to hear how the Lord blessed you through this program and telecast. Um, continue to uh, seek the Lord. Continue to pursue Him because I know the Lord has great and wonderful things in store for you, my friend. God bless you. Until we meet again on the next program, you know, this is destiny time. God bless you.